I found this at an antique store and the owner didn't even know what it was. The stick in the middle moves up and down and locks in whenever you put that piece of wood in the notches. I found it in Saugerties, New York, in an antique shop that sold a lot of things from the 50s to 70s. Any idea what this is made for? It's a ratcheting candle holder from the 19th century. As the candle burns down, ratchet the holder up to keep the candle light at the level needed. What is this giant cement structure with two arms found alongside a railroad in Italy? The structure seems to be pretty old and maybe abandoned. I thought about an old high voltage pylon, but there are no other structures like this one in the area and no structures linked to it. Any ideas? It's the pylon of the former Posilipo cable car in Fuorigrotta, a western suburb of Naples, southern Italy. That was the cable car that connected the Posilipo district with that of Fuorigrotta in Naples. Built in 1940 and in the years of the Second World War, there were several closures mainly due to the bombings, but remained in operation until 1961. In 1970, the support and traction ropes were dismantled, and the remaining pylons are jokingly called Christy by the population, as their shape resembles a Christian cross. I found this recently in the basement, and I have no clue what it is. It's not that heavy, like half a pound. It has a plug and has coils inside, and it's made of metal, so I'm curious to see if anyone knows what it is exactly. Any ideas? It's a knee pedal for a white sewing machine from the 1930s. It would have been mounted in a cabinet at knee height. Thomas H. White founded the White Sewing Company in 1858. By the early 1950s, White was losing money amid a flood of cheaper imported sewing machines and the loss of a supplier contract from Sears, which had represented 40% of White's business. In 1955, White moved heavily into appliances, tools and machinery, acquiring appliance brands such as Kelvinator, Gibson, Philco and Franklin. To reflect this, the company renamed itself White Consolidated Industries in 1964 and purchased Westinghouse's major appliance business in 1975, which resulted in the creation of the White Westinghouse brand name. In 1979, White Consolidated Industries bought the Frigidaire appliance line from General Motors. And seven years later, in 1986, the company was acquired by Electrolux. What is this six inch wooden tube with a handle and made completely of wood? The end has an ebony cap with slots and grooves running the length of the item end in points. It must be old because there is no plastic on it. The top disc doesn't turn freely, but can be persuaded. I received it in a box of assorted books and trinkets, which were totally unrelated. It was sent from a relative in Minnesota and I have looked for knitting based items, but nothing has turned up. Any ideas? It's a 1930s wooden snelled fishing hooks holder, a convenient way to keep your snelled hooks out of your fingers and to reduce tangling. Here is a picture of one with hooks in place. What are these oddly curved thin metal blades I found in an old toolbox that belonged to my wife's granddad? One of them has the letters CS on one side and an inscription Boklund Malmö on the other. I tried searching for that name, but found nothing relevant. Does anyone have a clue? They are furrier's knives from the early 20th century. After I did some research, there was a company in Malmö named C. Bockland and son from 1900 to 1931, and they manufactured gloves and stuff from leather. Professional furriers still use these knives today. You hold the fur up off the table, start the razor in the back of the skin, and slide along your cut line while keeping the blade off your table at all times. I bought this from an antique shop as a Christmas gift for my brother. The shop owner thought maybe used to adjust pneumatic or mechanical controls on large equipment. My brother is into old things that have a purpose and look interesting. I got him this to mount on a wood base as a decorative thing. Any idea what it is for? I'm a former licensed projectionist. It's a 35 mm film winder that would be mounted on a bench for rewinding and benching 35mm movies, 
up to 1975 or so. At the other side of the bench, you'd find a similar spool, but this time with a brake handle instead of a gear and pulley. What is this item I found, buried in my backyard in Greensboro, North Carolina? About 26 inches long, 2 inches wide, and 2 inches deep. It is made of solid metal, weighing 27.2 pounds, with curved etchings on both ends. I am doing some yard work and came across this thing buried a few feet from my back stoop. Only the top curved bit was visible so I thought it was a pipe, so I gently dug around it. Once I realized it wasn't connected to anything, I dug it all the way out. The metal is dark and very heavy. I'm thinking either lead or cast iron. The curved etchings around either end are the most interesting part to me besides the strange opening on one end. There are unfortunately no words or numbers etched into it anywhere, so my searches have been rather vague. Thanks for any help in identifying this weird thing. It's a linotype ingot made of a hard alloy, designed to fill molds used in the printing process prior to computerized typesetting in the late 20th century. People who cast their own bullets will buy it from you. What is this stainless steel kitchen tool with a wooden handle? I found it in my great grandma's kitchen after she passed, and the only writing on it says, stainless steel. The sides don't move, it's stiff with a wooden handle, maybe for chopping meat, or it might not be a kitchen tool at all. Any ideas? It's actually a pastry cutter from the 1940s. My mom had one exactly like that, even with a red handle. If she was using it, we knew something tasty was on its way. I was given this beautiful goblet after my great-great-aunt passed away. The only thing my family knows about it is that it was from her first husband who died in World War II, and that it came from his family. There is a note in it saying 1900, but the only identifying mark on it I can find is simply the word Germany, which makes sense because that is where his family is from. Out of curiosity, I would love to find out more info on it if anyone here has any. Thanks. It's an antique Jugend steel bonbon dish from the turn of the century. It was designed to hold sweets such as after-dinner mints. The concept of a bonbon dish is really a Victorian invention. They were made in the middle of the Victorian period. Although the majority are from the 20th century, and they are still being made today. My father-in-law found this amongst his crap, and we're not entirely sure what it is. It's made by Atlas Tool and Manufacturing Company out of St. Louis, Missouri. We tried Google first and came up empty. Any idea what it is for? Please tell us in the comments. Thanks for watching. Let's make life fun.